Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Be Well, Be Keto, and today I'm super excited to have T.C. Hale, who is a comedian, and he's also a natural health and nutrition author who teaches health professionals how to see amazing results with their clients. He also works with celebrity clients like Jane Lynch, writes books like Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, produces documentaries like the upcoming Why Am I So Fat, and he is a fellow podcaster with a show called Chat the Fat, and I'm actually going to be a guest on there very soon. So let's go say hi to TC. Welcome to the Be Well, Be Keto podcast, where we showcase ordinary people who have achieved extraordinary results. Your host is the high energy girl, Tracy Gluheit. Give a woman a fish, feed her for a day. Teach a woman to fish, feed her for a lifetime teach a woman to teach a woman to fish, and world hunger. Have you ever wanted to help people improve their health journey? Have you thought about coaching people with a keto lifestyle? Would you like to become an integrative health coach? Well, the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, or IIN as we call it, is the largest nutrition school in the country. And in 2011, I graduated from their program and became a health coach. It was completely awesome. We learned over a hundred different dietary theories and talk about craziness and confusion. My wish for you is that we can lock arms and create a tribe of health coaches all around the country, all around the world to spread the keto message. If this resonates with you and you would like to look into this option deeper, please go to my blog at highenergygirl.com and click on the link to the right of the homepage. Here you can grab the curriculum guide and see if it inspires you. Since I care so much about my listeners, I negotiated the very best tuition rate for you at IIN. Either you can contact them directly and give them my name, or I will introduce you to a counselor so you can decide if this is a good fit for you and your career goals. Let me know how I can support you in this coaching career opportunity. Have you joined the Facebook group yet? I have a new Facebook group called High Energy Girls, and that is pretty much where I'm hanging out these days, and I would love to have you a part of the group. So head on over to High Energy Girls on Facebook. Hey, TC, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me on the show so we can talk about things. I like to talk about things. (laughs) Do ya? Yeah, so maybe. Today you get to talk about you. How does that sound? It's a little more annoying because I'm annoying, but it's still talking about things, so I'll, I'll do it. Well, you're adorable, so I don't see how you could be super annoying, except for maybe your wife might think that. I don't know. My husband yeah, annoys yeah, me. That's where, I, that's where I get my information from. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's that. I think it's on purpose. I think men choose to just like goof around and, and just make their wives annoyed. Well, we're all pretty much nine years old, so that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> oh, we're that stuck. Explains. We're stuck like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that explains a lot. Then I never even thought about it that way. Yeah. Just treat us like we're nine, and everything will work fine. <laughs> Perfect. I'm gonna try that today. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Good. TC, for the listeners that don't yet know you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, yeah, like uh, like most natural health experts, I started my career uh, touring professionally as a stand-up comic. <laughs> oh, no way. Yeah, so I did that for about nine years, and what happened was I lost my voice, and it didn't come back. So when you're a comic without a voice, you're, you're more like a mime, and, and nobody wants to be a mime. So I just started going to doctors to get things figured out. And uh, 23 doctors uh, couldn't help me. I went through 23 different doctors and health professionals and surgeons and all this stuff, and nobody could figure it out. So I just, I kind of told them all, you know, I'm done with you. I'm just going to figure this out myself because each medication, each doctor, each everything they told me to do was just, uh, it was making me worse. I I, ha- I lived in this apartment at the time that had three steps up to the apartment. And uh, anytime I went up there, I had to stop halfway and rest on three steps. Really? So, yeah, so that's not what you want. You, <laughs> you want to be able to make it up three steps. So, so that had I, to do with your voice being lost? 
Well, it really didn't. Uh, it had to do with all the medications that they were putting me on to fix my voice. They oh. were trashing trashing my body and uh, trashing my ability to create energy. And of course, I didn't understand what was going on at the time, but now I, I do. Because what I did is uh, I told them I was done and I just started going to every nutrition workshop or seminar and reading every single book I could get my hands on uh, just to learn anything I could about how the the body works. And it took me eight years to get my voice back. Wow. So you had like no voice or you just had a raspy voice or? It started out with no voice and then it got to the point for, for a long time where I could talk, I could speak about 12 words a day. So I had to ration my words out <laughs> and I'd get really upset with somebody if they made me waste one of my words. I, I, I wasted that word on you. Uh, so it, it would just, uh, I could talk a little bit and then it was very painful and then it would just go. So that was the case for a long time uh, while I was kind of researching and trying to figure out you know, my answers. Did you ever figure out like what the actual diagnosis was and what the root cause was of losing your voice? Yeah, it turns out that my shoes were on too tight. Can you imagine? <laughs> I was so upset when I figured that out. Oh boy, time so to get annoying. some new shoes. Did you call Zappos? Right. Yeah, I just I go with flip flops now. And no, it, it was a number of things. I uh, I had a hereditary uh, iron overload issue called hemochromatosis, where the body kind of holds on to too much iron, and then it can create a lot of inflammation. And I had a hiatal hernia. It was causing reflux mm. issues, so the acid would come back up and burn my vocal cords uh, and just make it so they couldn't repair the way that they were supposed to. So that, coupled with the inflammation going on, um, was was causing the real troubles. And of course, a lot of doctors thought it was reflux, so they put you on a, a PPI that just kind of turns the stomach acid off altogether, but they don't understand that your stomach still makes digestive enzymes. And the digestive enzymes are made to break down protein. And guess what your esophagus is made of? It's protein. So even when a person takes those medications to turn off that symptom so they don't feel the reflux and feel that heartburn kind of feeling, they can still be creating damage just from the digestive enzymes in their stomach. So all those doctors didn't discover the hiatal hernia? No. Not and a, you not didn't a one. Know? Uh, and no, I didn't know either. And I, I still hear from a lot of clients now um, that deal with reflux issues and their doctor never mentions a hiatal hernia. Um, but the doctors also don't understand how to actually fix acid reflux. They only understand how to uh, turn off the symptom. And, it's, and, and it's, it's confusing to a lot of people because there's actually this uh, valve at the uh, mm -hmm. bottom of your esophagus, it's to, it kind of connects to your stomach. It's called a lower esophageal sphincter. So it's in charge of opening so food can come in. Yay, I have food. Thank you. But then it's supposed to close once the food is in there and breaking down so that it doesn't come back up. The trick is that valve is triggered by stomach acid. When your food goes in there and your stomach makes acid and it, it starts to break down the food, it triggers that valve to close. So when someone doesn't have enough acid in their stomach to trigger that valve, the food comes back up. There's a little bit of acid there, so it burns them, and they get reflux, and they watch TV and say, oh, I have too much acid. I'm going to turn that off. And instead, they kind of turn off their whole digestive system and their ability to break down food, and they turn off their ability to pull the nutrients out of that food. Hence, you have no resources, you have no energy, and you stop halfway up three steps. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I knew that that reflux was because you didn't have enough stomach acid. Um, I knew that, but I didn't realize that they couldn't figure out the hiatal hernia thing that would cre help create that. Like, I had one, and it was obvious. Really? Uh-huh. And, and basically, the, the hiatal hernia, you know, it kind of pulls your stomach up into your diaphragm a little bit, and it can alter how that valve sits so that it won't close correctly. And that's how it can be a problem for that. But doctors aren't trained really about hernias. And you, you, it took me going to a chiropractor to figure it out. Oh, I and love he, my he chiropractor. And started pushing on some things like, oh, you have a hiatal hernia. 
Right. Wow. And uh, so, but that's not, a chiropractor is not a mainstream thing. You know, that's not, uh, everybody doesn't go to a chiropractor. And um, I was, you know, years into this and, you know, trying out anything that I could. And somebody thought I might have an alignment issue with my back or something. So I was like, yeah, why not? I've spent $100,000 trying to figure this out. Let's go do something else. <laughs> and so uh, that's when he's like, yeah, you have a hiatal hernia. And so I started wow. learning how to do exercises to correct that. And I also, I also learned how to actually correct my digestive issues so that I could turn off the reflux uh, and still get to digest my food. Okay, so what, how did you do that? Um, it's really about, uh, we kind of teach people how to use, uh, HCL supplementation. Ah. Um, so your body's, there's a lot of reasons that a person might not make enough HCL. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's not, it, it, it's not just because you took a drug to turn it off. There's a lot of people aren't making enough HCL because the body requires minerals and nutrients to make that HCL. And when you have enough HCL, then you can break down the food to pull minerals and nutrients out of the food that you eat. But if you don't, you can't get the minerals you need to make HCL and your body's not making HCL, so you can't break down the food to get them. It's like, you can see how someone can get stuck in this situation yeah. for, for decades, yeah. So we teach people how to use HCL capsules um, and kind of ramp up to figure out what the right dose is for you and uh, once you can kind of simulate the proper digestion and your body can start breaking down the, the food and pulling the nutrients out that it needs, it'll start making its own HCL and a person can start kind of reducing uh, the amount that they use. I, I hate to say that, though, without a lot of other caveats. There's a lot of other steps that are important so that you don't create a duodenal ulcer or, um, uh, you know, create a diarrhea issue. Because there's other parts of digestion that are important uh, that you need to make sure are working if you're going to increase your stomach acid. So w we teach this in depth in every book that I I've written. And I'll, I'll do something for your listeners so that they can get this information. Uh, if you go to kickitnaturally.com forward slash book, I'll set it up so you can download uh, one of my books for free. It's called Kick Your Fat in the Nuts. And uh, <laughs> That it really goes through digestion and, and how to figure out which sides are not working correctly and steps you can take to fix it, uh, because you don't want to use HCL if if you don't have some other aspects of digestion working as well. So we kind of teach you how to do all that stuff. Oh, cool! Yeah, I'd be interested to see that. Just I love to fill my head with lots and lots of knowledge and learn. And it's so funny because in the process of learning things from other people. I realized that I needed to fix it on myself, but I didn't know that at the at the beginning of that journey. Does that make sense? It totally does, and it's and believe it or not, you're not the only person who went through that like that. You know, it's it's what happens is we just like let's, let's say the problem is bloating. Well, every everybody bloats, so you just think that that's just how it is, and you know maybe you're constipated, and like well, my mom was constipated, so it's just in my genes. I'm supposed to be constipated, but. That's not how it, that's not the case. It's when you're having these issues, your body is telling you that there's things that aren't working right. And you may have a genetic disposition to gear you towards those problems. Like I had a genetic disposition that caused me to uh, accumulate too much iron and that created a lot of problems. But that doesn't mean I'm, I'm stuck like that. Mm -hmm. You can, no matter what the issue is, you can always take steps to correct it once you understand what you're really looking at it. So it, it really is uh, about knowledge and we're all just learning. We're doing the best we can with what we know, but most people when it comes to how the body works, don't know much. And, yeah. um, even their doctor usually doesn't understand how the body works. They're trained on how to relieve symptoms mm -hmm. and the medications they use are geared and developed to relieve symptoms, but they don't work on the underlying cause. So when a person can understand the underlying cause of their issue, all of a sudden they have a place to start with. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I totally believe that. Um, and I, and I know that they mask the symptoms, which makes me absolutely crazy because I believe it would be so much less expensive to prevent disease than it would be to treat it. And they catch it after it's been in the body for so long. 
You know, it takes a lot of time for this for the symptoms to actually manifest into a biological, you know, condition that right. the underlying cause has been there for a while. And finally, it's like, throw, you know, your body throws its hands up. So they're like, OK, you know, wherever you're the weakest, that's where your your ailment's going to show up. So, TC, how'd you end up finding keto? Well, it was an accident, but let me just tag on what you just said there because I think this is important to understand. Uh, there's a couple aspects of this. Number one is that it would be a lot more cost effective to prevent illness, but it would not be more cost effective to the manufacturers of all the medications <laughs> out there. And those are the, the, the organizations that happen to fund all of the education that is created for our medical schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the people who make the most by us, you know, being ill, we're, it's not likely that that's going to get turned around. We have to become uh, responsible for our own health and we have to uh, put the effort of um, learning and being and educating ourselves into our own hands because someone else is, is not going to do it uh, for us. It's, it's easy to get upset about how the system works, but the reality is just look after yourself and and learn what you can uh, to to put things in into your own hands. Makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm writing a book right now, and it's almost done. And I address. All right. <laughs> I address all of that, you know, stuff from way back when Carnegie and Rockefeller took over, you know, the medical schools and all that. But it's crazy, and it's frustrating when you like. I have aging parents. And my dad has had cancer four times. My mom has Alzheimer's, Hashimoto's, and other things. Right. And they don't listen to me. No, I've been studying no. nutrition for 12 years. They don't right. listen to but me. They listen to their they doctor. They changed your diapers. They changed your diapers so that's hard to hear what you're <laughs> saying without thinking, does she have a poopy diaper? <laughs> Yeah, now they're the ones with the poopy diaper, but um, right, right, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I hope we. I mean, I'm sure we'll get to that point at some point. But you know, my dad, he has had cancer, and you know, he's. I told him, Dad, you've got to get off the sugar, and he's like, My doctor said it doesn't matter what I eat, right. And at chemo, he's sitting there, and I said, What are you doing? He goes, Eating cookies and candy. <laughs> While I'm on chemo, yeah, that's and and. It's, you know, it's easy for us to look at how ridiculous that is, but when the people who are supposed to be educated on this situation are telling us that it doesn't matter and the 300-pound doctor is telling him that you can eat whatever you want, <laughs> uh, it, it's confusing to the person. So what I find is that uh, it was very hard for my family and friends to listen to me when I started learning things too, but when you lead by example and you and you fix your own issues, then all of a sudden that they can eventually be like, hey, maybe I want to learn about that. Yeah. So the other side of the coin is that we understand that it's important to look at what the actual underlying cause is. The problem is pretty much every issue out there can have three or four different possible underlying causes to it. So in, even when someone's going to use some natural means, uh, they might use like a, a remedy that if the problem is insomnia, they may say, oh, I'm going to use a natural insomnia remedy. But the problem is the remedy that helps one person sleep better can make another person's insomnia worse because it's magnifying the underlying cause instead of fixing the underlying cause it did for their friends. So it really is about understanding how to look at our unique body chemistry and understand how we're operating because the reality is as awesome as keto is, there really is no diet that's right for every person because we all process foods differently. Mm -hmm. So that's why we hear about people that was like, oh, I've been on keto for 11 minutes and I lost 175 <laughs> pounds. But you also hear about people who have been doing keto and have gained weight. And there are reasons that that happens. And a person needs to understand, first of all, is keto right for my chemistry? And if it's not, what steps can I take to improve it so that I can succeed with keto just like these other people are doing? Yeah, absolutely. And that stems from just be having bio-individuality as humans, you know? Right. right. And uh, that's actually the title of the book that I'm almost done with right now. It's called Bio-Individuality. Um, 
But I teach about that in all my books. And if you get that book for free, I kind of break a lot of things down. But how I found keto was really by accident because I was trying to fix these issues. And I was never really overweight. I was doing personal training as a career uh, as well when I wasn't uh, touring as a comic because I just didn't want to be on the road all the time. It it ages you quite significantly. So I uh, was having the reflux issues and I I learned that a lot of times uh, when you don't have enough stomach acid, the bacteria can kind of thrive in your stomach and because the stomach acid kind of keeps all the bad guys out. It's kind of the barrier for the body. And so if you get overgrowth and then you eat carbs, those carbs activate the bacteria that creates more gases and pressure in your stomach and you get more reflux that way. So this was before I understood how to just fix reflux by adding more acid. So I started cutting out carbs, and it would help some. And I'd be like, okay, let me cut out some more carbs, and that would help some. And I was like, okay, I'm going to have no carbs at all. And so I ended up doing that, and uh, I, I ended up uh, like having like six-pack crazy, you look like an insane ripped guy thing. And it was by accident. I wasn't working out harder or anything. I just looked lean and like crazy. Uh so then I started using these methods to help my clients lose weight. And what I was doing was eating pretty much no carbs. I would just eat vegetables that were low starch vegetables you know, like broccoli and stuff like that. And I wasn't eating in an, I wasn't attempting to increase my fat because when I was doing this, keto wasn't a thing. The Atkins diet was out, but people didn't know what keto was really. And I would make these little coconut treats that I would call coconut yummies and it was pretty much what we call fat bombs today. So I was just not eating carbs and I would have a coconut yummy at every meal and I started uh, seeing how it was really leaning me out and so I helped some of my clients lose weight and I had a client that came to me at 435 pounds and he lost 235 pounds in 12 months. And wow. I was like, oh, this kind of works well. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. That's so much weight. So what's in your coconut yummy? It was just it was just like uh, coconut oil, and I would put uh, uh, poda arco, which is like a, a little antimicrobial herb, uh, and then like a little bit of stevia or something like that. And that was all that I used back then, and the poda arco kind of made it taste chocolatey, and that was like my one recipe. I didn't have the 737 different fat bomb recipes that we have today, that was it. And uh, so that was all I used. And I, I do different things now, and I, I don't really use uh, a lot of artificial sweeteners, even the stevia and that stuff, that much. Um, but I'm, I'm fine with clients using it to kind of help them transition or if they're doing great anyways. But that was all I used. And then I started to learn a little bit more um, about the ketogenic state itself and how that can accelerate fat burning. And I started using that with, uh, more clients and, but that doesn't mean that I use that with all my clients. You know, there, there are people that come to me that have some, uh, imbalance issues that can, um, cause problems with keto and make it very difficult and cause a lot of the issues like, you know, keto flu that people deal with and, that make people just want to quit and why don't you shut up and give me some Nilla wafers? And so <laughs> I don't use it with those people until I fix those problems or um, some people I find never need to go all the way to keto. They do quite well on low carb and they're happy that way and, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. So what would those underlying issues be? Like give me some like really specific examples of things that you think people need to work on before trying keto. Okay, I will give you some, and I will try not to over-science the whole house uh, <laughs> because it's very easy for me to start talking, and then I don't shut up for about seven hours, and some people may have understood three of the words I said. So I'll try not <laughs> to do that. Uh, but basically, here's a, here's a big one that it really is about digestion because um, you hear about people who get like keto rash or they get really nauseous when they start eating all the fats and everything. And the other side of digestion beyond the uh, stomach acid that our stomach makes is our bile flow. And basically the liver takes the filth in the body and says, this is garbage, I want it out of here. So it puts it in this stuff called bile and it sends it to our gall gallbladder where we kind of store it there. 
So what happens is when this acid stuff leaves the stomach, the bile then drops down onto that acid to kind of neutralize it. Because if it doesn't get neutralized, that acid kind of keeps moving through our intestines and it kind of would break down our intestines because that's what it's made to do, break down protein, right? So it has to be neutralized. But the way that we eat now can cause that bile to kind of thicken up where it doesn't flow and it'll get stuck. And then it forms stones and then we get gallstones. Mm. And the doctor says, let's just yank out your gallbladder and we'll throw it in the garbage because it wasn't really doing anything anyways. But we need that bile flow to truly digest our food because it's when this alkaline bile uh, meets the acid product that left the stomach there's like a difference of pHs of like a hundred thousand times so it kind of creates this like explosion it's like this sizzle that that really breaks apart all of those nutrients in that food and that's how we pull all of the vitamins and minerals and amino acids all those things we need that's how we pull it out of the food if you're not breaking down the food the food's just kind of going through you it's not really benefiting you like like you think it is, even though you're eating organic, uh, gluten-free, all natural, bathed by emperor penguins, you know, <laughs> if you can't break it down, it didn't really count. Right. Yeah. So that's the other side. And so what this, uh, well, I'm drinking my bone broth and I'm in my studio right now where I still have, uh, um, a crock pot of bone broth in here. So if my interview smells del- delicious, you know that that's, that's why. <laughs> so, so you drink that uh, every day? I, I drink it most days. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I, I think it does well for me. And uh, Okay, but anyways, so the bile is also what helps us emulsify or, or break apart the fats that we consume. And if you can't break those fats down into the, the levels that you can utilize them, they just kind of rot and ferment and become toxic in the body. And then the body says, I need to get this out of here. And since bile is not flowing correctly to remove the toxins in the body, the body starts looking for other exit strategies. And one of those strategies is our skin. So it starts to push junk out through the skin and then the fat clogs up the pores and we start to get a rash or we get a breakout or we get acne and all those issues. So what happens is if somebody doesn't have their bile flowing correctly and they're like, I am going to keto it up. And they're just going to eat all this fat. They're going to feel nauseous. Maybe they vomit on you um, or they have these crazy skin issues or they're not creating the energy that they are hearing everybody talk about. Hey, I was supposed to have all this energy. I got nothing. I'm lying on the couch. Uh, And it's because you ate the fat, but you weren't able to process the fats. So now that person's miserable. He quits ketos and runs right out and gets a a tub of chubby hubby ice cream. And he says, that diet is stupid. I'm not doing that anymore. And you shouldn't do it either. Look at what I did to my face, you know. So the reality was that there was nothing wrong with keto. It's that 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 person wasn't processing the foods that they started to uh, predominantly eat. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Totally. So how do you – so say you have this client and this is his his problem. What do you tell him – to do to increase and improve his bile flow? Um, You just, if most towns today have a witch doctor, so you just go to the witch doctor. (laughs) No, it's the, it's interesting though, because like there's a number of things that can really thicken up bile. One of them seems to be grains. (laughs) So Mm. it's kind of, when a person wants to go keto and they eliminate all those grains, they're going in the right direction. And um, sometimes by increasing that fat, that you're kind of calling on the body to say, hey, I need more bile, and you can kind of get it to flow more better that way. But most people need more help. And we do two things. We use uh, a beet greens supplement. It's called Beet Flow. Uh, I think uh, Empirical Labs is who makes it. And uh, that helps to kind of thin the bile so it can flow correctly. And then we also use, uh, and people were going to cringe, but we use coffee suppositories or coffee enemas. Oh, yeah. So that means, yeah, you got to put stuff up the back door. And <laughs> most people don't want to hear that. But what that does is it helps to kind of open up that biliary pathway a little bit so that it can flow a little easier. And uh, so it really depends on how severe the issue is for you. Some people have had bile backed up for decades. Like if a girl has been on birth control where it has a hormonal aspect to it, um, high estrogen levels really can thicken up the bile 
And uh, so it's very common for someone who's been on birth control to have bile flow issues. Mm. So if a person's had a problem for a long time, they often have to put a lot of effort into getting it to flow. But once they get it to flow again, now they're now they're in business. Now they can eat those fats, process them. They get to feel great. They don't have the skin issues. They have the energy. And now they get to lose weight because the body's actually able to use those fats instead of those fats just becoming another burden that the body had to deal with. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. So what – okay, so I have a lot of questions. So yeah. rewinding a second, what HCL supplement do you like? I like them. There's a lot of them out there, and I'm, I'm really fine with just about any of them as long as they don't include – ingredients that reverse the effects of the HCL. Like um, there's a lot of people who use like ox bile. And so people think, oh, that helps digestion for some people. So we'll just put it in this digestive supplement. But the problem is ox bile is alkaline and it will neutralize Mm. the HCL and the acid. So we do have people use ox bile if they've lost their gallbladder, but we have them, we have them do it away from their meal instead of during their meal because then they're just turning off their digestion. But if you can find an HCL capsule that pretty much just has HCL in it and that's it, then that's fine. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. I mean, I don't have the problem of that right now, but I love to learn, you know, all the right. juicy details of how to help people better. Um, okay. So what health benefits besides a shredded abs did you <laughs> notice when you, from keto? Like, did you experience any other health benefits? Well, mine were quite drastic because I got my voice back by implementing all of these things, oh. you know, by, uh, by, uh, uh, fixing my iron overload, um, by, uh, increasing the stomach acid so that my, I wasn't getting the reflux and working on my hiatal hernia and reducing my carbs so that I wasn't get the, getting the reflux. And I was able to reduce my inflammation by reducing my carbs. So it was a big pocket of things that did that. But what I like to help people understand a lot of times is because some people view keto as it's, uh, wow, that's just magic. You should go on keto because it's magic and it fixes everything. And uh, I I don't really view it that way. Mm -hmm. But there are so many health issues where uh, high insulin levels or excessive carbohydrates are either causing the problem or contributing to the problem or reducing the ability for the body to focus on healing that issue. So when you can remove carbs, it makes it easier to fix a lot of problems. The real trick is that because of some imbalances that some people deal with, they can't remove carbs. And when they do, they're not only miserable, they might also go insane and yell at the mailman because they don't like the mailman's shorts that he's wearing. You know what? Whatever. They, 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 they have these emotional issues that go out of control and they have a temper. And, and the reason is because their body doesn't have the ability to process the other nutrients that they're replacing the carbs with. Carbs are so easy to break down and, and use. Uh, they, you turn it into fuel almost immediately. All this processed junk that's so bad for you, it's easy to turn that into glucose. It's almost instant. So if a person tries to eat, I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to eat the steak and this broccoli, and I'm going to put some butter on it. But if the person can't break down the steak, well, you can't really use that. If the person can't emulsify the fats in that butter, you can't really use that. So now you just took away their only fuel source, and now they're miserable, they hate you, and they hate everybody else. So (laughs) they go back to the carbs. So it wasn't that keto is magic, but if if you can process the foods correctly, Now your body can run on fats. It doesn't need the carbs. Your body doesn't scream at you. It's it's not an issue of that you have low willpower. It's that your body's saying, hey, we need fuel, and what you're giving us we can't use. So keto, I don't view it as magic. I view it as amazing at helping a person remove their need for carbs and remove that burden of the insulin levels always being high, creating all that inflammation, all the other trouble that it causes. Um, So it kind of becomes magic just in how it makes it easy to eat the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think for me, um, just the difference in not having 
to be hungry all the time. That right. was a huge thing for me because, like, I come from the old school. I mean, I'm 53, and, you know, I mean, back in the day, it was like, you know, every three hours, you got to eat. Every two and a half, three hours. So I yeah. would eat at 7, 10, 1, 4, 7, 10, you know, and – and just that, and I was always hungry when it, when it came around that time. Yeah. But now like I, I'm often not hungry and it's funny cause my son and his girlfriend are really, they're gym rats, you know, and she is like tiny, but she's trying to, you know, get stronger and stronger and stronger. And she eats when she's not hungry. And I always joke around with her. I'm like, why do you do that? You know, and she does it cause she doesn't want to lose her muscle and she's a traditional eater, but I love the freedom of not being hungry. It's really it's like it really frees up your day. And I and a surprise for me was, wow, look at all the money I'm saving. <laughs> I'm not eating seven times a day. <laughs> I, this is pretty awesome. So let me ask you, you you're a trainer, so you clearly probably left. Do you go into the gym fasted? Um, I do sometimes because I train very early me when too. I work out. And uh, another big difference for me now is that I only lift – you know, two or three days a week. And that's all I do where I used to do five, sometimes six. Um, but I find that I don't need it as much. Um, so uh, I will sometimes go in fasted because I, I do it pretty soon after I wake up. Uh, but um, that's not always going to work for everybody. Uh, but it, it, it works for people more than I, I used to think it would. I used to think differently that you really had to eat something before um, you lift it, and I understand now that you just don't. Okay, yeah, I I feel better when I don't have anything in my stomach, and mm -hmm, sure, I was told um, by Luis from Keto Gains. He's like, you need to have some protein before you go in. Um, he said that you'll get way better results in the gym if you have some protein, and I keep forgetting to try it. Um, because I'm just like you know in the habit of I wake up, I grab my coffee, and I'm out the door. I will say this, though. If a person doesn't have enough resources to break down that food correctly. So digestion takes more resources than pretty much anything we do in our entire day. Uh, so if a person doesn't have enough resources, enough minerals in the system to uh, make that digestion work correctly, then it will make your workout much worse because your body is putting all of these resources towards digestion and you don't really have anything left uh, to to lift with. But if digestion is great, then eating can make, you know, it does do just like he was saying, it can give you more fuel, more resources, all those things to make the workout a lot better. Um, but I find that I just don't need it like I used to think I did. Mm -hmm. I want to try it just to see how I feel. And, you know, because I lift heavy two times a week. Mm -hmm. And then I do, um, I'm a fitness instructor. So I do like boot camps and, you know, yeah. things like that. Um, three days a week or four, three and a half days. And so I just want to see if I do the extra protein shot, like if I do just do a quick shake in the morning as soon as I get up and see if that makes a difference in my strength gains. And I will say this too, that uh, it appears that a person really needs to be fat adapted to do well with a fasting workout. Um, if someone's just like, oh, I'm just going to try that out, then they're probably going to bonk and that's not going to work for them. But when you're really fat adapted and you're succeeding with a keto diet and it's working for you, then your body's operating a little bit differently. And uh, a person will usually do a little bit better in that case. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. So you said you were moving from L.A. to Florida. That's right. So I'm a trainer for about another week. And then I'm retiring from that. I won't be doing that anymore. I'm just going to be doing all the, like we do, we teach online courses and I write books and do speaking and stuff like that. Who's we? You keep referring to we. We is me and all the, the voices in my head. <laughs> um, well, I, I have a variety of we's. I have a few different partners and uh, like we just launched a new keto podcast called Chat the Fat that um, next week I'm interviewing this amazing girl. Uh, her name's Tracy and she's going <laughs> to tell me all about how she uses keto. Um, but on the Chat the Fat podcast, I have a partner, Nissa Gron, um, who uh, she kind of accidentally found keto too and lost over 100 pounds and was uh, featured in People Magazine for losing all kinds of weight and stuff like that. Oh, so it's cool. So sometimes when I say we, I'm talking about her and then other partners that I work with too. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So why are you going to Florida? 
Um, we have a toddler and, uh, you know, mommy's like, you know, I, I really want him to grow up around family and we don't have any family here. So family was either Florida where I grew up or Seattle where she grew up and Seattle, Seattle's cold and rainy. So Seattle lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What part of Florida are you going to? Uh, I grew up in Jacksonville. Oh, okay. So my dad lives in New Smyrna beach. Oh, great. Very nice. Yeah. So I was just back there early in the year. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's nice there, like with the ocean and, and I'm in Northern California, so I don't get to the beach that much. The water's kind of cold here, but New Smyrna beach is beautiful. Right. Really great. Really nice. So that's awesome. Um, so what is, where, what is next for you? I know that you have a lot of little things going on in your life. There's so much. What what projects are you working on? Well, um, when I get to Florida and I won't, won't have to be doing training anymore. It's going to free up a lot of time. I'm going to be able to finish a, a documentary that we've been working on. Uh, it's called Why Am I So Fat? And that was kind of features um, the client that lost 235 pounds. And we, you know, this, we were having success with this. So we're like, hey, let's just make a documentary. But then people started hearing about it. And we ended up, people were like, oh, let me help out. I want to play with you. That looks fun. And we have interviews from people like Rob Wolf and uh, Dallas and Melissa Hartwig and Chef Robert Irvine and all these huge, you know, Shape Magazine. All these people got involved and it's just got out of control. So um, I'm really excited to get that finished and, and get that out hopefully at the end of next year. So that's the biggest one I want to get working on. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. Um, that whole term, like, why am I so fat? So let me ask you this question. So with working with all the clients that you've worked with and all of that, do you find that a lot of it has to do with people using food to fill a void in their life? So you might be sorry you asked this question. <laughs> Never. We might go on. Okay. So it, it, it really is. Um, but here's what I found, and I don't want you to think that someone can't have uh, emotional issues that can um, that they can uh, improve by just using food to deal with that. But what I found is that those issues usually have an underlying cause. And the underlying cause is often that they don't have enough minerals in the system for the body to work correctly. So what happens is when minerals go low, very low, a person can have a seizure. And when blood sugar goes very low, a person can have a seizure. It's basically the body shutting down and saying, we don't have enough to function, so we're shutting it down. Now, when blood sugar and minerals go very low, it really magnifies the odds of a person having a seizure. So what the body does is when one of those things goes low, it says, hey, give me some of the other one. And we get cravings for things like sugar that we can quickly turn into glucose or we crave salty things like, you know, French fries or all these other things. Um, so when both of these things are low, there isn't enough things for signals to travel correctly in the body, like signals from the body to the brain, they kind of bounce off minerals and other nutrients in the, in the system. And when they're not there, things don't really work correctly. So it can create all of these emotional issues. It can create um, uh, temper issues and uh, energy production issues where the person just doesn't feel good. So no matter what it is, the person finds that they're better when they eat this junk. So why would they stop eating that junk if when they do, they're depressed to the point where all they can do is lie up in the fetal position and watch old episodes <laughs> of Brady Bunch? You know, why, why would they do that? So yes, the junk that they eat makes them gain weight and maybe it even makes them obese, but they get to function as a human. And the doctor tells them, stop doing that or you're going to die in a few years. But to them, if they stop doing that, they feel like they're going to die today. So why would they do that? So what I have found is that when someone can fix these issues, give the body actually some resources that it can use, all of a sudden, not only do they feel better and a lot of these emotional issues are just gone. I've had clients that we're literally seeing a therapist for 15 years just for their cravings. And when they fix their digestion, changed it to where they actually put some food in their body that had nutrients in it, it wasn't just chemicals, uh, the body could use those nutrients, then the cravings were gone. The emotional issues were gone. They didn't need that therapy anymore. So I find that, yes, it's, it's very true that 
People use these things as a crutch, but when I see it, I don't blame them for doing it. It makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I know that when they stop, they're going to be miserable. So uh, the thing is, is there's an alternative. You can fix how your body's functioning and then you just don't need that junk. So not only do you get to feel good, but then you do get to lose weight. You don't. You do get to improve all the health if you, health issues that eating that way was causing, and, and that's just fun. Yeah, and I call that crowding out the crap. You know, it really is. Give yeah. your body all the food that it needs so that your your it can be happy and you can feed your cells, and you crowd out all the crappy food. Yeah, because the thing is, is that people feel like, oh, I just have all these issues in my life, so I, I this is the only choice I have. But the reality is, you know, we all have issues in it, but body is not functioning correctly, and your body is in this huge state of stress. Um, that stress shows up in your life. So you, we may all have issues that are maybe a three or four on a scale of one to ten. But when you don't have the resources for your brain to function correctly, all of those threes and fours are viewed as tens. So you feel like your life is this huge mess when the reality is that if you ate in a way and your body processed those foods in a way that allowed you to think and to function, uh, they may just be threes or fours to you. Mm. They may not be such a big deal and it might be easier for you to to deal with them. Ooh, I like that. That's a really good thought. That's good. I've never even thought about it that way. But I, yeah, because it we all have problems. They're there. Don't don't. I don't want to tell somebody those problems are not real. They are. They just may be magnified. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to think about it. So when is your documentary coming out? We're shooting for the end of next year. So with, we've done the shooting and we're in post production and doing all the editing and animation and all that kind of stuff. Oh, cool! That's so exciting. I'm so happy. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, there's a trailer up at Why Am I So Fat Movie if somebody wants to check it out. It's, it's pretty fun. Okay, and then since you just said that, where else can people find you? Um, but kickitnaturally.com is my main website. That That's a, that's another podcast I have that we kind of talk about different health issues like insomnia or anxiety. And we kind of go over a different uh, issue each episode and kind of talk about what causes it. Um, and that's where we house all of our online courses and stuff like that. So that's probably the best place to find me. And don't forget that if you if you want to read one of my books for free, like they're all on Amazon, but if you want to just read the the digital version for free, just go to kickitnaturally.com forward slash book. And I, I kind of walk through a lot of the things that I talked about today and understanding, you know, there's just simple tests that you can run at home. Like if you know what your blood pressure is telling you, you can look at your blood pressure. It tells you a lot of stuff about how you're processing food and we kind of teach people how to do things so they can kind of take control of their own health instead of counting on other people. Yeah, that is so important. I mean, ugh. and plus, you know, like just the medication that they put you on and how they're, they counteract each other and then they cause side effects. And I have a friend who just told me that he is on cholesterol meds and I asked him like about his numbers and like I said, well, what's your HDL? And he goes, oh, it's really high. And what are your triglycerides? Oh, they're really good. And I'm like, well, then why are you on medicine? Why are you on medication? And you know what he said to me? He said, Tracy, you're not a doctor. My doctor told me I should take the medicine. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, my. Yeah, oops. <laughs> I know, I know. So I just gave him the book, Cholesterol Clarity. I said, here, read this. That's good. <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see Jimmy in, uh, in about two weeks. Uh, oh, I'm, that's I'm speaking- right. I'm speaking on his low carb cruise, so I'm excited to hang out with him. Oh, cool. Have you been on that cruise before? I haven't been on it before, yeah, so it's going to be fun. Oh, good for you. Awesome. Well, my dear, I just want to tell you I appreciate you coming on the show. You are just a wealth of knowledge. Well, and thank you very I much for having learning. me. Yeah, you are. You just had, I, you gave me so many different nuggets, and I'm sure the listeners got a lot to chew on also. Well, I'm excited to talk to you next week for our show. So I uh, hope all your listeners um, check out Chat the Fat to hear Tracy's uh, episode, which will probably be, I think it's around number 27 or something. But um, yeah, you'll be able to find Tracy's interview for sure. <laughs> cool. Well, awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we were able to squeeze this in between all of your jaunts and your move and everything. Right. So crazy. Okay, great. Thanks a lot for having me. Okay. Well, I will talk to you, you know what, next week. Great.
Okay. Well, have a super weekend, TC. All right. You too. Okay. That guy is totally hilarious. And I just want to thank you so much for listening to our goofy conversation today. I am so happy that he decided to come on the show and shared his wisdom on how you can heal your body. He is awesome. So if you would like to see details and the links that he mentioned so you can get that free gift, he promised you, head on over to BeWellBeKeto.com and click on his show notes page and you can grab that link, okay? And lastly, if you will please give us a rating and review on iTunes so more people can find this awesome show. We are writing a book so that it's going to be all of these wonderful, inspirational stories of all of our awesome guests, and that will be coming out later this year. So thank you so much again for listening, and go out and make it an awesome day. This podcast contains the opinion and thoughts of its host and guests. It is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subjects covered. All statements made on the podcast have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. If the listener requires professional assistance or advice, please contact your personal medical doctor. Both host and guests specifically disclaim any responsibility for any liability, loss, or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the contents of these episodes. Like I said, this is my opinion and I could be wrong.